He wanted to keep up with the neighborhood. The neighborhood has changed, so we had to change. We couldn't stay the way we were in 45 or 70 or 80, 90. We, we wanted to make this space uh, brand new and up to date. The shadow of COVID-19 may be receding as many of us return to our own definitions of normal. But some communities are facing the consequences of the country starting up again in full swing, particularly through the jumpstart back into rapid gentrification. As investments in some communities drive up housing costs and the pandemic complicating the job market, black and brown people were being pushed out of their neighborhoods and their history and culture were actively erased. This issue has ignited outrage from black communities throughout the nation. And in response, progressives begin referring to some aspects of gentrification as environmental gentrification, insinuating that the real estate brought into these communities will also bring forward positive environmental change, like more bike lanes, usage of solar energy, etc. The gradual erasure of small black businesses is a key example of this larger issue. Many of these businesses serve as community hubs and cultural landmarks, but gentrification creates many challenges to keep their business afloat. Lee's Flower Shop is one of those businesses. Lee's Flower Shop is a family-owned business that has been a U Street quarter staple since 1945. Stacy and Christy Lee took over operating their grandparents' flower shop after they passed. Well, my grandparents, William and Winifred Lee, it was their vision, their, their, their baby. And they opened the shop in 45. And they, um, they just persevered during, through the years. They were very smart people. Despite having luck getting this property, the shop has faced the brunt of many challenges throughout their history, from issues with the supply chain to dealing with complications caused by the pandemic. It was just my sister, who's my business partner, and two drivers. <laughs> and we would come in on alternating days. So it would be me one day and have one driver and her the next day with another driver. <laughs> and so, that was pretty scary and we would do all the orders. It would be like maybe 10 or 11 orders a day. These types of challenges and hardships have been status quo to the black community throughout the pandemic. The Commonwealth Fund found that nearly one third of all of their survey respondents has faced at least one negative economic challenge associated with the pandemic. The most frequently cited issues were the depletion of personal savings, difficulty paying for necessities such as rent or food, and taking out loans to make ends meet. And opening up the metaphorical floodgates only increases these complications. In fact, cities with higher rates of gentrification displayed more of these issues with additional complication of rapid displacement. San Francisco, Boston, Denver, and of course Washington DC are few of the cities that exhibited this pattern most throughout the pandemic. Lee's Flower Shop has been one of the businesses that has been deemed suitable to the new residents, but that hasn't been the case for many of their counterparts. The new residents or the people that have moved in have been supportive of the business as well. And with the shop local uh, movement and that sort of thing, we've really, I mean, we've, we've, we've done well, and but we just, we just hate that people have been displaced because of gentrification, because um, you know, this area was, was a thriving um, area in the, like the, the Renaissance. But um, during my grandparents' time, U Street was the only place that black people could shop because we couldn't go downtown to Garfinkel's and those kind of places. It was like Black Broadway. They had the um, the Bohemian Caverns across the street. They had we have Industrial Bank, which is a black-owned bank that was founded in 1934. Um, we had the um, Howard Theater. You had the uh, no Howard Theater is there. Uh, no down down the street there and the Lincoln Theater. So those theaters were the places that we could come to 
Um, and my dad always talks about people used to dress up. They would have, they would be dressed to the nines coming to U Street because it was a great place. Then it went down. Now it's back up. We're um, we're happy that we were able to stay here. These facts only beg the question: Is eroding Black culture the cost of combating climate change? In all, we need to continue going out of our way to support Black businesses. Local media outlets are a great source to learn about the emerging and historical Black businesses in the DMV area. But this issue is more than about just merely supporting Black business. Gentrification is a structural issue with many layers that need to be stripped back, examined, and solved. Protecting the environment should be a central issue within this conflict but it should never come at the cost of Black culture, art, and community.